chemistry is data science. Uh, I mean, natural sciences are data science. So, I mean, each experiment that we, that we run creates data. Our um, research is um, increasingly um, going forward in a rapid pace. So how can you stay innovative and keep up with all of this? Yeah, sometimes I, I also wonder about where do discoveries come from? Why did this person make a certain uh, mm. the discovery? In my opinion, it is really a couple of things. So, so first of all, you need to um, be an expert in a certain field. So you need to know what is known already and what would be fantastic, basically a fantastic new development. So you need to know the, the frontiers of, of, of your discipline. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's number one. But then I think it also is very important that you, are, that you work basically in a um, supportive, supportive uh, and uh, stimulating environment mm -hmm. you know, so that you have other scientists around that basically yeah, can, can basically be your discussion partner and um, I think this is then um, allowing you to um, also appreciate findings that you make uh, but that you didn't plan for, mm -hmm. so serendipitous findings. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that they are yeah, so um, ubiquitous in, in, in chemistry. No? I mean, uh, no, we, we, we don't plan for it, but we find it. But then to realize that what we just found is a breakthrough mm -hmm. and not uh, garbage, basically. So yeah. I, I think this is um, the, the, the final, um, yeah, decision or that, that you have to make basically no? and, yeah, and, yeah. And that you have to realize. And you have such a broad uh, variety of different research topics so how can you successfully manage all of these and uh, keep them up at high quality? This is a good question. The answer is uh, fantastic co-workers. Um, I, I have a large research group mm -hmm. and each of my co-workers is highly motivated and very independent and um, I really try to um, create an atmosphere where we all basically work together. So we, we talk a lot about our ideas, we help each other. And um, so this basically generates independent, successful co-workers. And that's why we can work on, on many different fields. And um, you talked about uh, a lot about machine learning. How are you using it currently in organic chemistry? Yeah, um, I always say that chemistry is data science. Uh, I mean, natural sciences are data science. So, I mean, each experiment that we, that we run creates data. Um, and so more than 10 years ago, my group has started to um, develop tools to uh, systematically um, run experiments. And um, so we, we call this a robustness screen that allows us to see if reaction is generally applicable. Um, I think that's where a machine learning in chemistry starts. You have to be uh, aware of data. So you have to create data of high quality. Um, in the end, you also need enough data. So this is a very important aspect, uh, the data aspect. And then you have to uh, basically solve problems. Um, for example, a computer basically cannot understand basically this kind of molecule model that I have in my hand. Mm -hmm. So for a computer, you have to translate this in zeros and ones, basically. And um, this, this is called a representation. is far from, from, from trivial. To teach, basically, the computer what a molecular structure, basically, is, is about. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think um, it's also really fascinating because uh, machine learning chemistry is also um, hyped so like um, also machine learning in, in many other everyday areas, basically. Mm. No? I mean, everyone talks yeah, about it. Yeah. No? Um, but um, in, in chemistry, in natural sciences, we often have the problem of uh, only a scarce uh, data uh, set. So you, know, you, you would need more, much more data to come to high quality predictions, and, but you don't, don't have the data. So uh, machine learning cannot do miracles, basically. Mm. No? It, mm. it is basically... Uh, it can be a fantastic tool, but not more. Mm. And uh, what other um, technologies do you think um, will 
um, change organic chemistry in the future? <laughs> You're asking tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in my opinion, also related to this, this uh, addressing the data situation, I think this is really key. And um, so this means that we have to think about how to um, generate more valuable data points in a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. And the data points that you generate should be of high quality. So we need a discussion, what, um, what is a high quality data point, basically. Yeah? And, and, and then, once you have generated the data, the data also has to end up uh, in a repository, in some, uh, some way it has to be readable and usable, basically, mm -hmm. by the community. I think that's um, one very, very important direction. So. Um, and then with the data, basically, we can do machine learning. Other technologies, I, in my opinion, um, we have a fantastic repertoire of analytical tools. Um, it's not necessarily chemists who have these tools. Um, I'm thinking of scanning tunnel microscopy or um, um, non-contact AFM, so te technologies with which you can basically investigate surfaces, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, uh, research groups in physics have these tools, but chemists can benefit from these tools. So, um, collaborations, basically, across the different disciplines, I think this will enable us to do, uh, to reach the next level, basically, mm -hmm. to do to, to research, basically, um, that, that leads to yeah, fantastic um, breakthroughs and, and applications. But we have to basically use the tools that are, that are out. Mm. You're also very active in, for example, the GDCH, but also the um, um, German Research uh, found Foundation. Um, so what motivates you to, to be active in these um, parts as well, besides <laughs> your research? They, yeah. they call, I answer. <laughs> 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 no, I, I mean, there are many different uh, things that need to be done in a community. I mean, mm. actually, uh, yesterday was my last day as dean of my, my faculty, uh, so faculty of chemistry and pharmacy. Uh, I, I served as a dean for two years. That was uh, a lot of work, uh, work that needed to be done, but it was also really very rewarding uh, because mm. you basically interact with many uh, motivated people uh, and, 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 and we have a a goal, basically, you know, in, in that case, it was mm -hmm. to make the de department better, basically. Um, but then, with the agencies that you that you mentioned, basically, I mean GDCH, for example. I mean, uh, also really wants to, um, I mean, not only represent chemistry well, but wants to basically be do, do good for mankind. No? And, mm -hmm. and so we have to, I mean, if there 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 there's money for funding research, we have to decide no? which project, basically is the better project um, and, and should get the money. Eh? That's why I, I really uh, enjoy, is maybe too much, but mm -hmm. I, I, I absolutely see the, the value in basically uh, spending time on this. Eh? So um, for, for many different agencies, I, I'm, I'm involved in the evaluation and you, you also learn a lot. Uh, I mean, because you're exposed to, to the research, but you also meet uh, fantastic people. Uh, mm. I mean, also selfless people. I mean, they really spend the time not uh, for their own sake, but really for the sake of community. I mean, that's also really, really rewarding. Yeah. Mm. What is most annoying? Uh, bureaucracy uh, and and the the build up of bureaucracy. I mean, also as dean, the last two years, I mean, I could could see this, and this is really something I think all of us have to to fight against because in the end it doesn't do any good uh, for anyone. Um, what is important for teaching? Oh, there, there are also many, many different things. I mean, I think first of all, you need to know your business. Mm -hmm. So, you, I mean, you cannot teach maths if you don't know about maths, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, the same is true in chemistry. But then I think uh, what we also need is a good relationship uh, between uh, the, the teacher and, and the students. Um, and actually next, next week our teaching term will start. And I'm also thinking about this. I mean, how, how can I get, get better in this, basically, I mean, how can I, yeah, make, make make the gap smaller between because the students they they always feel oh the professor uh, doesn't have the time basically to mm -hmm. talk to us no? or so mm -hmm. but that's not true I mean I think for 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 professors I think 
the most important thing is really to see the students grow, basically, ne? and, and, and to provide them with the information, mm. with the tools, with the environment, basically, to do this. Uh, yeah. mm. um, thank you very much. So thank you so much for the nice interview. Yeah.